Along those lines, another thing I showed last week that I want to demonstrate today is a trick with HUDs. So what we've got up here is we've got uh, two images. Uh, we've got an image for the ship and we've got an image for the bombs. But what I've done is I've created a, a scaling effect, a scaling and a filling effect where this is actually one image but it shows three entries. Same thing with this one. So I'll walk through that. And then I think that's probably going to be about what we've got. But if not, I really wanted to show um, an example that is not related to the game because I've been seeing a lot of questions about this. And uh, it's called Shuffle Bags. And it's a method for getting random numbers in a more uh, deterministic and uh, useful fashion. So why don't I just shoot right in here? Oh, actually, let me, let me show this off briefly since you've got, I've got my camera up here. I'm casting my I'm using air server to cast my iPad and if you played this today you would see something like this and it's got two virtual joysticks a left and a right and this code has been added to the project so you can just dig right in there and see how it works but uh, I don't know I'm pretty pleased with this it's, uh, this is the first game I've ever done with Corona that automatically detects the environment it's in and changes up the, um, the input scheme so this is a new one for me and hopefully for the folks that are following along. Let me go ahead and quit that and then bring up our first example. Let's start with the HUD trick. So again, the HUD trick is basically a way of presenting images as HUDs, heads-up displays or counters and such, but using a single image to represent a quantity equal to zero or more. Now the way this example works before I look at the code is when you first run it it's going to show a bunch of different HUD examples and each of these is a counter. This one is aligned to the center, this one is aligned to the right, aligned to the left, and then this is a different HUD which we'll talk about in a minute. But as you run this, if you click on the screen, what it does is it increments each of these HUD entries by one. So now each one represents two three, four, etc. And then eventually when you get, I think it's to six or five, yeah, when you get to six, it sets it back to zero, and then you can click through it, one, two, three, four. So you can see how these things behave. And I did this so that as we talk through the code, it will make a little more sense. So let me get these things out of here. And let's bring up the editor. Now, uh, a link will come with the show notes today. And the first of these that we're going to be looking at is the HUD trick. And the way the HUD trick works is... Hey, Ed, can I stop you real quick and just have a real quick question? Sure. Um, would this also work with uh, sprites? Right? That is a... I think so. You know, uh, sure. Ask me a question that I haven't investigated. <laughs> I think it would work. Uh, let, let me think about this for a minute. Um, the only part that I worry about here is that we're using texture wrapping. So I'm not sure how texture wrapping affects sprites when they play. But assuming that there's not a bug in there or some kind of hidden feature that I'm unaware of, this should work. So in theory, you could have HUDs that are both animated and single object, but could visually behave as if they are multiple objects. So let's start this over again. I'm going to walk through the code so you can see what's going on here. In this example, let me, let me full screen it, you're going to see two functions. You're going to see one called new HUD, and a little bit further down, you're going to see another one called new HUD 2. Very um, creative names. The distinction is, is that these first three examples are created with new HUD, and this fourth one is new HUD 2. And the difference is, is uh, a lot of times what you'll see in games is that they will expand the HUD say like for three lives or four lives but then when they get to a certain number then they'll ramp it back down to one image and then with a numeric counter because what you don't want is you don't want somebody who's like a high scoring player to expand their lives HUD all the way off the screen I mean you, know, you could do that like back in the days when we played um, arcade games really good arcade players would, would have that problem where their lives would flow off the screen. And I don't think that the, um, the people who made those games really thought that anybody would get scores quite that high or 
uh, life counts that high. But if you're trying to create a modern game, you might want to consider the case where somebody overflows your counter to the extent that it starts to interfere with other elements that are on the screen. For example, if we go back to our game, and we just pause this for a minute, what we don't want is we don't want this live counter to flow all the way over here and then to obstruct our visibility or our ability to read the score counter. And likewise, if we had something over here, we don't want the bomb counter to flow over. So ideally what we would do is we would display a certain number of each of these and then when it gets to a value greater than our limit, it would collapse back to one and we'd have a numeric counter. So we still get the information we need, but we're not wasting space and we're not um, overlapping other elements in our display. So the way we achieve this is very simple. It's incredibly simple. First thing we do is we set the default wrapping me um, mode for X. So we have the uh, texture wrapping for X and Y. And the only one we care about is the horizontal wrapping. So we set texture wrap X to repeat. And the reason we do this is that Corona is, uh, uses OpenGL or a, a GL variant. And we need to set the rendering state before we create our object. Then we need to create our object. And then we want to reset our state later for any other objects that come after. So in 